Hi guys, Knife Edge UK here. Um, today's uh, really kind of a maker overview or a, you know, a maker spotlight kind of video. I want to talk to you today about possibly my favourite knife maker um, and certainly the three knives you see on the table in front of you and one just off to the side as well are three of the most perfectly uh, made pieces of cutlery I've, I've ever had my hands on, um, production or custom, um, they're just exceptional. So the maker here is David or David or yeah, whatever you want to do depending on where you're from, I would say as he's French, David Lespec and these are just beautiful. So um, who is David Lespec and what does he do? Well he's a French knife maker of really really high renown uh, you will find other videos on his work uh, i believe eugene kwan has done um, a few videos uh, eugene makes great videos um, and a few others have as well um I've, incidentally I've, I've got this one out in front of the camera because this is probably my favorite um basically david he doesn't work like most other knife makers you'll see obviously design similarities between the three knives you've seen on camera already but that's just down to you know his aesthetic sensibilities but every single one of his knives is made as a one-off so he doesn't repeat patterns um, another great custom maker that we have here um, is someone again another french maker like uh, remy lavial for example this is his new hardy model and like most makers in the world he will make various versions of this model it's a stunning knife beautifully made um, David doesn't really do that. It, it, they are basically he starts with his raw materials and he draws out the outlines of the knife and just starts to make it. At least that's my understanding of the way that he works. And that is, um, it's crazy um, <laughs> and it's it's just it makes every one of his knives feel extremely personal and like their own little expression. And certainly they're they're irreplaceable from that point of view. Um, the three we have here today uh, are very classic in terms of his general design aesthetic. Uh, you will see ones that, that vary quite a lot, but you can tend to get a very clear sense that something is a Lespec just by looking at it. it, it you know, they kind of scream a mile off. Um, these are, uh, I say, three very, very classic ones, and there's a slightly older one off to the side that I'll show you in a second. So... Um, he tends to make front flippers, but he does also um, occasionally make back flippers, or certainly used to. And he also used to make knives like this. This is a this is an older one, and I think it serves in some ways to illustrate how long um, he has been a master cutler. Um, this knife, um, I don't actually know the date of when it was produced, but it's a number of years ago. This is a kind of a I believe he referred to it as his ball lock um obviously whatever that comes off as in in French um when it was first released uh, when he first did these for a few of the um the knife shows in France um this one's ironwood over uh, carbon fiber and then it has I believe this is a W1 uh, blade with um the differentially hardened Hamon line um which is just stunning and a quite characteristic uh, less spec swedge and it's just, it's exceptional. And even back when this was made, and it's, it's interestingly, it's a really nice, smooth friction folder, but then has a nice little pop into the clothes, and it also has the most fantastic ergonomics. It's beautiful. And everything about it is basically as perfectly done as the most recent knives, which is staggering. I mean, look at how well done that ball lock is. And then this gorgeous ironwood backspacer, that's uh, concave through the centre and then transitions to a convex whoops, at the back. It's just exceptional. So back when this knife was made, he was already making, I mean, stunningly good knives. And then these more recent ones, this I believe is the most recent one on the table. This is the largest of the, of the three. It, incidentally, I'm not going to go into loads of sizing and all the rest of it on these because it's not really the point when you're looking at, at knives of, of you know, this kind of custom end. Uh, this one is stabilised maple burl um, that's obviously been stained. Um, and then it has a micarta backspacer. I wonder if that's showing. Again, with that concave into convex look. Beautiful sculpted. It's a bent but sculpted pocket clip that he does in a dark blast. And then this just stunning blade with this gorgeous differentially hardened ham on line. And you also get these shadow boxed liners as well. These run on bearings. 
I say these ones, apart from that early one that I showed you, are all front flippers with these gorgeous harpoon style swedges and these drops to this beautiful edge. And that's another thing that I want to talk about. A lot of custom makers make fantastic knives. Um, you know, there are other custom makers you'll see on this channel that make wonderful knives. Very, very few of them will be quite as perfect as, as these, but a lot of them get very, very close or, you know, to the point where, you know, you're not going to argue. The a few of the little details on a La Spec knife um, that are just stunning. So, you have a completely convex ground, ultra fine edge. I mean, that is just spectacular. Um, as a sharpener myself, um, these knives have really pushed me to, uh, to do more and more and more freehand convex um, edges because they're just fantastic. And if you do use these, Incidentally, all of these have had a little bit of use, though I won't, I won't tell you that any of them impressed into hard use because, to be frank, they're, they're just too valuable. Um, but the, they're just, they're, they're, yeah. it, the edge grind is fantastic. You also have, if you get a different one for this, um, this one is in ironwood. I'll come back to the previous one in a second. This one is in ironwood with an RWL34 uh, stainless blade. And you can see, again, that staggeringly good well, an incredible hand rub satin. I mean, that's as good as hand rub satins get. And then an incredibly fine convex edge. Um, this one, I say, is in ironwood, again, with these shadow box liners. And this one has a G10 backspacer with a similar sort of approach. And then you have a crown spine along here with two different sections of jimping, one really for your front flipper and one for your finger. And, I mean, the ergonomics on these knives are just... I mean, that is just stunning. That melts in your hand. It is a small knife, but it feels incredible. And the action is just stunning. So let me know if you want individual videos of these knives, actually, guys. If you're, if you're really into this kind of part of the knife world and you, you'd like to see full videos on each, you know, let me know. Again, this one's got a slightly different style of pocket clip. Again, that just comes down to what David wants to do. Um, the mechanisms on these knives are perfect. Uh, this one has a completely drop shut action um, and just a perfect snappy deployment. Doesn't matter how you do it, it's just. Try and get in camera, eh? It's just fantastic. These ones are Gigi. Um, scales with this faux bolster and again another little example of the of the detail that goes into these knives. Again, I mean look at that hammer. That is just stunning. Amazing. A little bit of a, an example of detail. This is perfectly finished wood like all of these are. Um, this is beautiful. Incidentally, he does work in synthetics as well. And if you take a look at something like this, heavily stabilised and stained, this, this almost feels like a synthetic. It's beautiful. But beautifully polished and finished. And then he's actually sandblasted, at least I think it's sandblasting, uh, the faux bolster. But then this section, the little finger chamfer, is in the same finish as this. It, it's just... It's beautiful. This one has this um, sort of nice little hook at the end, which is a nice little aesthetic touch. Um, with my hands, I can get all the way in here, which is great, or I can hold it back and it feels fantastic as well. It's lovely in a pinch grip, they're just, they're just fantastic. This one has kind of a burlap micarta backspacer that I can hopefully show you. You can see the different angles that are grooved into that, are just amazing. It's it just, these are, yeah, these are stunning knives. If you're into knives and you really love, you know, fine high-end customs or whatever else, or you just, you know, if you ever get a chance to handle one of these even, please do. I feel immensely lucky to have these ones in my collection. Um, so yeah, they are just, they're, they're beautiful. And I wanted to get them on camera for you um, and have a chat with you about just why these are so sought after in the custom knife world right now. Uh, there's a huge amount of hype around um, David's work and I can understand why because it really is peerless you know there's a lot of makers that blow up and you know they're worth a lot of money and you know the secondary prices on these are admittedly slightly crazy I get really really big offers for these all the time from other makers uh, from other makers from other collectors um, and I you know I'm lucky enough to have them and really if there were other makers knives that I thought I would enjoy more um, these would these would be gone by now but Honestly, uh, you know, having handled a lot of great knives by a lot of great makers, you know, I've been extremely lucky, um, both through sharpening work and through my own collection. Um, uh, there's really nothing that I want 
more than any of these. These are, they're that good. So thank you very much, guys. If you do want to see, you know, individual videos on each one, I know I've been a bit scatterbrained as per usual in this video, um, but it's hard not to be when knives are this cool. <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.